Yay. Hey there, I'm Blue Linica, and we're going to Neil Felt today. Uh, I'm going to show how to make a Korok from Sonic Frontiers. But before we get into it, a joke so my the people I met during Renaissance Fair know they're in the right place. Also because the rest of you haven't heard it. A goat made out goat from my own goats. And if you were at Renfair, you would remember that. Because <laughs> that's how I started off a lot of my conversations. Especially when it comes to my nail felting. So, what we're going to do is a Korok from Sonic Frontiers. This is going to be a multi-part video specifically so people can go at their own pace a little easier. So, starting out is basically going to be a ball. It's how most of my nail felting projects start. Now, you can work as big or as small as you'd like. I'm going to be showing a larger version so you can actually see it. Um, I will start with a single needle, and I'm using the cheaper ones today. Uh, but at some point while working, I'll probably switch to the multi-needle tool. Again, I'm going to be working on a much bigger scale. If you want, you can make it as small or as large as you want. But no, the larger it is, the more wool you're going to need. So, let me get some music playing here and lower the camera so you can actually see my workspace. There we go. Bring this down so I can actually think. Whee! Aha! So, wool buddy, needles. And I will show how these work, but I'm not going to keep using them. So, if you're going to use leather guards, wrong hand, make sure you put them on the hand that's holding down the fiber. What that's for is try to keep you from stabbing yourself. Now I'm using sheep's wool as the core. So a lot of times you'll work with a core and then go over it with a different material or a different fiber. <sighs> yeah. As I said, I'm going to be working a lot bigger so you guys can actually see. So you have your wool wo blah, blah, blah. wool roving. So you get in general shape, in this case, a ball. And you just take your needle and stab it over and over again. The more you stab it, the more dense it will be. Like I said, I'm starting with a single, but I'll probably be switching to a multi rather quickly. Again, when you're working with a lot of fiber, multi-tool is multi-needle tool is usually a better option. But yeah, what these leather guards are for is so you don't stab yourself quite as bad. But even working with a large, it's trying to hold a shape. So there you go. If you're curious about the music I'm using, I'm actually using Streamlabs music. It's called Gamer Lounge. You can pretty well uh, ignore it if you'd like. I just know a lot of the music I listen to, I'm not allowed to use on the channel. <laughs> so, that's why I'm listening to this. Not that I mind it. Sounds quite pleasant. Yeah, I'm going to switch to the multi-tool. <laughs> Too much fiber for a little tiny single needle. <laughs> Ain't no rolling. Watch, why are you going off? I should probably look. Of 
Corey, I'm busy. I can't talk to you. I love you, but I can't talk to you right now. I am demoing. And there we go. Needles loaded up. I'm trying to be good. <laughs> Yeah, you just do this over and over till it's as dense as you want it. Take it slow till you're comfortable and just be worn. Yeah, these nails are sharp. It hurts to be stabbed. I'm sorry if I go quiet. There's really not much to talk about here. Because it really is the same motion over and over. Until that whole interior of the fiber is all tangled up. Okay, now it's contained enough where I can switch back to a little needle. Smooth this sucker out. <clears throat> Don't worry if it doesn't look perfect. Half of my projects still come out derby. And I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> I'm actually trying to remember when I first started. You know what? I can actually look up when I got my first kit. That's what Amazon's for. Mm. Because I honestly don't remember. Okay, yeah, December 10th, 2016 was when I got an official kit. It was a dinky little kit too. It didn't have any fiber, it had very few needles. So, yeah. The kids now are a lot better. They actually include everything. Including that kid I showed in my introductory video. Just so you guys have some background on this. And you don't worry about going fast. You can go at whatever pace is more comfortable for you. I'll go a little faster again because I've been doing this for a while. 2016, huh. I 
didn't realize I've been doing it quite that long. <laughs> But no, I'm not speeding this up. You're getting it real time. Because that seems to help people be a little more relaxed about this. If it's too slow for you, you can always fast forward through the video. I know YouTube includes an option where you can actually tell the video to go at like twice speed, three times speed, or whatever. But for those who want to go at regular speed, yeah, you're getting all of it. Now, the reason I said this is a core fiber is I wanted to use this core rock to show, well, the basics of every project I've done. So, yes, I could have worked with some gray material, but I wouldn't show how I would change the color of something. Because a lot of times you have a lot less of the color wool than you do of the white. Now, I happen to have a lot more gray wool, but that's because my goats produce the gray fiber. Only a few of them produced white. The rest, it was all different shades of gray. Some really dark, some really light. Now, I'm not showing much of the goat fiber here. Now, I am going to go around the outside of this with fiber from my goat who is called Wanderer. And yeah, these goats were originally my mother's. And I believe the two I have left are both 13, and goats normally only live about 12. <laughs> Mine ended up more cube shape. Oh well, <laughs> it's fine. The beauty of Koroks, if you look at them, they're all different, different types, so. Let's we'll see if I can round them out, but... If not, it's no big deal. Again, don't stress about this. Don't expect it to be perfect. I never did needle felting for perfection. I always did it. Just something to keep me busy during run fair and to help me relax. Sometimes stabbing something over and over is rather therapeutic. Even better when you're stabbing something and it's actually making a thing. A craft where you're allowed to be violent. <laughs> just make sure it's not you that you're stabbing and it's just plain ordinary fiber. A lot of this is just go with the flow. In fact, most of my projects, I don't even know what they're going to become until I'm done. So, there we go. Got your basic ball, which is how most start out. 
Next is we want to shape it a little. So we want to give it a little legs. To do that, just go ahead and stab right here over and over. This I have to do with a single. If you stab a single area fast uh, enough, it'll actually create that. Din. Not fast, just. I'm going to go fast, but. Go at what's comfortable. But if you notice, it's already getting that indent there. And that's what you want. And part of it starts scrunching forward or back. Just stab that back in. What we're doing here is trying to get our basic shape. Use your fingers to spread the fiber a little bit. And turn on its side and stand the side of the legs in more. So it ends up more defined. I hope this is making sense. I personally am not a perfectionist, so I already know mine's not going to be perfect. But you go until you're happy with its general shape. Sheep, sheep, sheep. <laughs> oh, I forgot to put up a, what a Korok actually is. Let me solve that. So, I'll tie my little decoration here. There you go. That should help. So what we're working on are these little legs down here. Let me put my finger there so it, yeah. <laughs> oh, and for once I'll actually have an answer for people when they ask how long did it take you to make this or that? I've never actually timed myself on any of my projects. <laughs> this will be the first time it's actually been timed. There we go. It's actually standing. It's rare I have a project that actually stands like it's supposed to. Okay. Well, I'm happy with it. So. Next up would actually be the outer covering of this. So essentially, we're going to be working in several parts. 
this this first video is just general shape base the rim around so the rim around the top here will be doing in a different video so what we're working on is just this general area we're not even messing with the face again I'm trying to do this in a way where you get some basics where you can figure out how to do the do anything else your little heart desires so how you do the hour covering is you do a general cover and then stab it in so this fiber that I'm using as the hour cover of mine is from one of my goats his name was Wanderer. Let's see, do I still have a picture of him? Should. Doesn't necessarily mean I do, but I should. Oops. Oh, we even have a cute little adorable baby picture. So, I didn't want to move it to my desktop. No. Want to open it. And let's see. There we go. Give me a second to readjust sizing. Whoops. There you go. So that's what you look like as a baby. That's what That's what you look like later as an adult. So he actually produced a really really soft fiber. Which is what I'm working with here. So his fiber does not tangle very well on its own. Which makes it great for an outer covering, but doesn't work well for a core. It's like very, very silky. And smooth. But he is what is known as a type B. So, Pygora goats produce three types of fiber. Type A is Angora fiber, which you can also get from a pure Angora goat. You can also get it from Pygoras and a, a Nigoras. So I'm probably throwing out names you guys don't understand. So a Pygora is a cross between a pygmy goat and an angora goat. An angora goat is very, very large. They're also hot tempered. And then your uh the pygmies are really small goats. Meanwhile, Nigoras is a cross between a Nigerian dwarf and an Angora goat. So a Nigerian dwarf goat is actually a milk goat. An Angora is most generally a fiber goat. Pygmy goats are usually a meat goat. 
that a lot of people keep pygmies as just pets. So. Anyway, Nigoras and Pygoras can produce type A, which is Angora fiber, type B, which is a mixed fiber, or type C, which is cashmere. Now, most goats produce cashmere, but it's so hard to get a hold of because it got such a tiny window to gather it. Most cashmere is shed away. And how you usually gather it is from brushing the goat. Some goats appreciate it, others do not. Uh, a couple of my cashmere goats. Uh, well, actually one of them was all attitude and if I took too long brushing her, she would try to bite my face. So, yeah. Thing about goats, they're stubborn, ill-tempered, though they can be quite lovey. But if they don't want to do something, yeah, be prepared for a fight because... <laughs> Yeah, they may look small, but they're like muscle muscle. Now, this fiber isn't as clean as I could have done it, but I didn't want to spend an eternity cleaning it. <laughs> so I have a little bit of debris in mine. Mostly it's just a little bit of pine. So, it was pine shavings. So yeah, with the outer covering, you just keep putting it in until it's as smooth as you'd like it. Away, pine. But for the most part, you still want to keep your shape. And make sure you keep a first aid kit handy. Now, I did actually remember. So these are the band-aids I was talking about. I'll just open one up so you can see. So this is a one of those pinpricks type band-aids. They're tiny and they're perfect for just covering small wounds. It just sits like that. That's one of the main band-aids you need. If you slip and cut yourself. And don't feel bad if you do. Yes, it'll hurt, but here's the thing. Even people who've done it for years upon years upon years still stab themselves. In fact, you'll find that with any craft that involves a sharp needle. Be it sewing, cross-stitching embroidering you'll always catch yourself and there is actually a joke with it that joke is it's the blood sacrifice for the needle gods <laughs> again it it's only because it seems whenever you do a needle or any needle craft you usually catch yourself <laughs> I 
And yes, I've seen masters do it. I have a tendency to catch myself. Now that I said that, that <laughs> I probably just jinxed myself because I haven't caught myself once today. Well, actually, I did catch myself when working on a prototype, but I haven't caught myself since starting this larger one. Uh, <laughs> let's see how long that lasts. Oh, you're actually still standing. Amazing. It's rare I actually get a project to keep standing without a counterweight. But this is working out quite nicely. Almost caught myself there. get it compact enough where this outer fiber won't come off unless of course the cat attacks it word of warning keep your projects up cats can destroy these very easily and they love to so when they do they leave quite a mess You'll tear it apart and you'll find fiber everywhere in your house. Or apartment or room or wherever the cat got hold of it. They will spread it everywhere they can walk. And the more you stab it, the more condensed it'll be and sturdier it'll be. Now, if you live in a dry environment, occasionally spray it like once a month or something like that. Or the desert dryness will turn it to dust i had only a f i had a couple of my projects die because of that so like right here i have an opening i need to cover that with some more outer fiber again i'm working with a much larger thing i don't know how big yours is it's your Korok. Make it as big or as small as you'd like. Heck, you can even color it how you'd like. I'm just covering the basics. Because at the end of the day, you're making your own Korok. You can also use it as another joke. This is proof that I can stab something over and over and over again with the world with a world full of patience. <laughs> yes, I know that's a bit of a gallows humor there, but it's a joke a lot of cross stitchers have too, and people who embroider. This is proof that I can stab something ten thousand times and still continue to stab. <laughs> now if you're into like crochet or knitting another thing you can use the that wool roving for is to make thread 
Now, I never actually could figure out how to do that. That was something I didn't have the patience for. I have patience to add things over and over. I got patience to draw. <laughs> I got patience to even make a animated wallpaper. That's actually how I do all the end screens on my videos now. And opening screens. But spinning? Nah, I never had the patience for it. And I only recently tried embroidering. That was that uh, patch I showed you earlier with the wolf. Okay, I got it right here. I've never actually embroidered before. I had a guess on how to do it because I've done hand sewing. I used to make little stuffies when I was little. And so, uh, yeah, I decided to make a patch for a jacket I have. So. But I have been really done much. That is why I don't demo that. You'll find I will only show things I actually know. Because I don't like leading people astray. I really don't. I just didn't realize I had Neil felt it that long. Wow. Okay. <sighs> But yeah, this is how I entertain myself during Renfair a lot. So I'll, I'm part of Dominion of Capella. And so we do like a monthly get together. In fact, I believe our next meeting is October 28th. That's our Halloween meeting. That's where instead of dressing up in medieval clothes, we're actually wearing Halloween costumes. And doing spooky foods. I believe I'm bringing butterbeer. And yes, I know how to do alcoholic butterbeer and non-alcoholic butterbeer. <laughs> so, it's a thing. <laughs> Dressing up as a rogue. Hey, if I record on... Well, I probably won't record on Halloween. But I'll probably be uploading something, I think. Actually, Halloween is on a Tuesday. Mm, I may still do a Halloween recording just for fun. Actually, it'll probably be more of this or something else. I'm not sure. I, I really don't know. Maybe, maybe not. So it might be fun to record while dressed up in my robe costume. <laughs> he has one leg off to the side. Like he has got a little bit of attitude. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> Actually stands too. I'm going to do a little trimming around here. So what I'm doing here is, because of the type of fiber I'm using, specifically Wanderers, uh, there are some longer hairs here and there. So I'm pressing this against the side here, and I'm just, uh, sorry, I'm pressing against the side here and just trimming some of that fluff away. Mostly because I want to smooth them out a little. Oops. I'm trying to keep in the camera. Hmm. 
Now you can use these shears to cut roving and fiber. I just don't like how it affects the fiber when I do that. That's why I primarily use this just for trimming. Specifically the long hairs. I believe those are guard hairs. Because he was a type B, but he was type B with a little more cashmere than Angora. There we go. Ta-da! So now we got our base. So, next one, I will cover how to do this outer edge here. Because, yeah, I want to do this as a multi-part video. So you can go at your own pace. Let's readjust you up. There you go. <laughs> So there we go. Korok base. Next time, we'll go with the edge around here. We're probably going to do just a simple edge, like this one in the middle. If you want to get fancy, by all means. <laughs> but it'll cover how to do that edge, how to cover it, how to add that little indent detail which I'm going to use a combination of Neil Felting and sewing. Mostly because this is very good when you're trying to get a very specific deep detail. And then you Neil felt it in. I will show it, so don't worry about it if you don't know what I'm talking about. That's fine. That'll be in the next video. So for now, I hope you enjoy it. If you're not subscribed, make sure you do so you catch the next one. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Oh, and don't worry. I will still do some gaming. <laughs>